side. It's really pretty much off of her hip. And I think the, the, an easy way to fix that is to just take the ball earlier. Again, going to the backhand side and drawing dividends. I, I think with, with Groff's forehand, it's like it's an ocular thing. If she if she moved it, if she took if she took her forehand about a foot in front of her. Look, watch where she makes contact here. See how late she is. That's really like off of her hip. So it's uh, you know, and the ball is coming at her a lot harder than it used to. A lot of the players are hitting with so much more pace and depth. So she she's being robbed of time that she that she used to be able to play with against these players. You know, it's uh, used to talk in such glowing terms about her forehand, Mary, but I, I agree that she has got to work on getting the racket back earlier as well and hitting it sooner. I think the two things would come together. Yeah, I she do. is late so often on that She's thing. late, and, and again, it's nothing terribly mechanical for me. I just think she's got to see the ball earlier and, and think to hit it further in front of her. 3-1 Sabatini. add something is what the players are feeling when they play Steffi now versus 87 88 when she dominated the forehand was such a strangling shot for her opponents several years ago and today it's nowhere near as strangling I think one of the reasons is because she's taken so much more time worrying about the backhand done for Sabatini and Groff did roll a couple of backhands in that rally but and, and they were pretty well done but again my, my feeling is that you know the, the backhand isn't going to win her the her matches it's the forehand take a look at that 86 number 387 88 uh, look at how long <laughs> she was number one in the world but look at look at I mean she's still she yeah I mean we, we keep talking about Groff slipping away I mean. she's not gone yet she's number two in the world after all yeah mm -hmm. She's got a tremendous game. I'd love to see her get back the arrogance needed to use that game to win. And she is just, she's operating without that right now. Well, here's Love 40. You know that what you would not, neither, not any of us have said, but that maybe as important as anything is the fear factor, the tingle factor when you play against Graf. You know, for all of those years, you went out against Graf, you made your reservation. You see whether it's 9 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the afternoon, but you knew you were going to be on the flight out. That's not true anymore. So that makes it harder for her from the first match because everybody knows that she is now at least beatable and not invincible like she was for a few years. That sale from Steffi Groff is in trouble in this first set. Deep trouble. Two breaks of serve. Four games to one. And Sabatini will serve when we come back. Four games to one. Sabatini. Sabatini serving. That's the first error from a while for a while off Sabatini's racket. Her ground strokes have been so penetrating off both wings. Your best shot against Sabatini is on against her serve, the first point you play against her serve. Every other department of the game is so solid now. She is truly, and it's another double for, for Gabby, her second. Gabriella is true the most complete player in women's tennis I mean, she, she's really except for her serve which uh, I'm shocked which at, what, at what Steffi just did because Sabatini's serve if it was long just by a fraction and she just didn't want to play it very dangerous now that's the same play that Sabatini has given Groff a couple times when Groff has come to net, and that is that finesse 
back cross court and Sabatini volleys it in front of her up the line to Gross forehand. That's a much smarter play. She made a great volley from low down. And the overhead is basically routine after that volley. This game, four games to one, Sabatini. We're right back to where we were about a year ago. The Virginia Slims of Florida, Steffi Groff, uh, beaten by Sabatini in the, the final Lipton Championship again. In the semi final beating Groff. <coughs> beating Sellis in the final, Family Circle Cup beating Lela Meski in the final. And here at the Bausch and Lomb, it was these two against Steffi Groff. <coughs> Steffi backs up. That'll go long game point for Sabatini. The ball's bouncing uh, Sabatini's way as well. Well, in the middle of that point was an example. If Steffi Groff is going to work on her net game and come to net, she should have on a very short ball from Sabatini in that rally. Instead, here Sabatini reacts to the net cord, but Groff missed her opportunity. Sabatini leads five games to one in the first set. Two serve breaks. Graf will serve, trying desperately to hold on in the first set. Take a look at this for the week, including today's matches. Nine double faults apiece, 14 aces for Graf to one for Sabatini. Service broken six times. Graf, Sabatini, 11. And a period of uh, six weeks last year, Sabatini won all but one. That was the final at the Lipton to Monica Sellers. This is a very difficult shot that Groff made. And it's not the kind of thing you want to try to do all match long. You know, Mary, what you said there is exactly right. She can come up with one or two of those passes, but to do it over three sets, it's very difficult. Gabriela Sabatini to serve for the set after this break. Chita Martinez. But she hasn't lost a serve yet. In this match. Four percent on her first serves, and uh, Sabatini's been pretty effective behind both first and second serves. Look at that three out of four on second serves. Well, that 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 spinny, that high spinny kicking second serve oh. is more difficult for Groff. Yeah, and Sabatini has definitely been hitting her second serve harder today than she has in her previous matches. <laughs> Is that a call you think that is? Or? 
Why that reaction from Groff? I think the reaction was just to try and psych herself up. Okay. She played a great point. I don't think anything was too close on the calls there. Uh -huh. Maybe that one. I like it when Groff gets angry, though. Uh -huh. And, uh, and she needs to do that against Sabatini because sometimes in a Sabatini <coughs> match she'll get disconsolate and go away. Oh. Definitely an emotional one. She's got to stay with us. There's that slidey wide forehand we've seen a lot of errors off of. Two points from the first set for Sabatini. 30-15. It's only natural that Steffi would hit a lot of long balls against Sabatini because she's so worried Sabatini's going to take the short ball and approach. So you try to get that extra length. I just remember the days when no players could get it. So you get, you'd get length against Gronk because they were never controlling the rallies. She was always forcing short stuff from her opponents and then putting it away. That is the big difference now. Steffi Groff twice did not lose her own serve. 6 2 first set. Carlos Kirmayer used to play in a band with called the Flea Bags. Bands have some crazy names, but I kind of like that one. He's now, of course, 17. He's they did a lot of chamber music. He's <laughs> a drummer, I think. Yeah. guys can hit that shot so effectively. It's not an easy shot to play. Watch this again. You know who used to do this one pretty well? Lendl. He kind of liked that shot. Yeah, he sure did. How many women have you ever seen shoot something like that down the line? First game of the second set. What makes that backhand down the line so good is it's got a lot of topspin, and the fact that she's hitting it over the high part of the net is not bothered. It doesn't bother her as much because of the topspin, because she gets a lot of height on the ball. 32 or 52 points played for Sabatini so far. It's a very high percentage. Difficult shot to read this backhand down the line because she really explodes. Bang! The last fraction of a moment and pulls it down the line. She can take the same shot cross court too. And she can slice both directions as well, so you're all at sea as far as what she's gonna do. Seven, seven tries for Gabriella Sabatini. Don't take your head off to her. She's just playing very, very good tennis. Some errors from Groff, yes. 
But Sabatini's in fine form, 6-2 and one game to love. She should follow it in. She even hesitated there for a moment before deciding that it was the right play. You wonder if Steffi ever watches on a video, watches some of these matches, and if she couldn't visually see some of the opportunities that she passes up, if that wouldn't help. <laughs> I don't think there's any question in her mind, Pam, that Gronk knows what has to happen. It's, it's just the nasty business of doing it, doing something that you don't feel comfortable doing. I still think she's confused as to when her openings, when they're there, when are the percentage times to move in, when you get there, where do you volley in the court? This is all new, and she ought to really have a look at herself. Two big returns off the deuce side. Three break points for Gronk. See, she prefers the, when Sabatini gives her a little bit of pace on serve. It's the very spinny, high-kicking Sabatini second serve that, that she's been worried about. Gabby doesn't like uh, one of the balls very soft. Of course, new balls just came out. This is the tenth game of the match, new balls after nine. Back, so this match is now even in the second set. First set easily to Sabatini. It's one game all in the second. First set, you can see Groff really struggling on serve, and she had, you can see, twice the unforced errors and not nearly as many winners as Sabatini. I mean, all the numbers are pretty much going against her right now. And then when she's missed her first serve, she's been in a lot of trouble, as you can see as well. Here's a second serve from her first point. Third game. Second set. Well, and there's an example. I mean, she got on the offensive with a great second serve out wide. Sabatini floated it. And once she lets that ball bounce, then everyone's back to neutral position. Sabatini's actually got the edge then. They're both on the baseline. I like Sabatini's chances in a long rally more than Grobs. did a nice job here of catching Sabatini, covering the down the line. Sabatini makes her move, but it's short. Gives Groff a chance to shoot at cross court as Sabatini was fading the other way. McDermott is the chief operating officer of the Bausch and Lomb Company. But he's uh, said that he's going to retire here in the next year. Behind him is speed skating champion Kathy Turner. Won two medals at the Olympics. <laughs> Again, you give her a short ball, she still knows what to do with it, Rob. But too often she's facing length and pace against players like Sabatini, Capriati. There's Kathy Turner. She won a gold. She won a silver as well just a couple of months ago. I 
asked Kathy Turner the other day what the big injury is with uh, short, short track speed skaters. She said, get this, gashes. Imagine she showed me all these scar, little scars on her legs. Yeah, what is that? Did not work. So Steffi Graf is ahead. The new kind of deal for this match. She lost the first set 6 2. 2 1 in the second. 6 2 for Sabatini, 2 1 for Graf. We're on serve in the second set where Amelia Island, which is a beautiful and strategic barrier island off the coast of Florida, has been so coveted, in fact, that eight flags have flown over this slender spit of land, charting the ebb and flow of world powers from the 16th century to the present day. Eight flags over this little piece of territory started originally with the Tumaquan Indians. Love 15. how much Gabriella Sabatini worries about the fact that if she loses this final, she'll go down to number four in the world behind Martina Navratilova, who's not playing this week. Knowing Gabby, probably not that much. No, I don't, th I don't think that's what she cares about. I agree with you. I think most players at this level are really looking to win major titles more than anything else. She's one of the most marketable personalities in all of sports, Gabriela Sabatini. As a matter of fact, she has a perfume that sells and is the best-selling perfume in Steffi Graf's country, Germany. She signed a big deal with Pepsi-Cola as well. She's a Ray-Ban spokesperson. That makes her a big favorite down here at the Bausch & Long. Ray-Ban's part of that family. She's been with them for seven years. A double. 1540, she's in trouble in this game. One game to two, she trails. Third double fault. She's definitely trying to hit out on that second serve more, and she's also going up the T more to the ad side, trying to catch Steffi moving, looking for a forehand runaround. Sneaking in. Nice movement from Steffi Groff. Sabatini went for that volley, but couldn't put it away. Didn't do enough with it. And gave Steffi Groff a chance to close out this game, an all-important game for her. She's trying very hard to make her move in set two. Three games to one. Has there been a turn around here or what? One set and a break in the second set, and since then Groff has won three games. Well, and Steffi showed this morning that she's fairly resilient after uh, a tough run by her opponent because she lost the first set this morning, 7-6, and was down an early break in the second and came back and won. Thanks for bringing up to Pam. It's uh, probably time to remind you, if you just joined us, that this match uh, is being played in the afternoon, Sunday afternoon, but they both played matches this morning because of rain yesterday. Clearer that one instead of love 30, it's 15 all. Not a tough overhead either. Yes. Right off the line, I mean, it hits the line, they will skid on you, and that's what happened to Sabatini. Way out of reach, not much you could do about it.
probably wonder at home whether or not uh, that often happens where players have to play two matches in a day, especially if they have a final. And back in 1985 or 84, Sabatini's first year on the tour, she had to play, finish a quarterfinal match, win a semi, and then played a final at Hilton Head. That was the last. That was, this is the first time since then. And didn't she have to play you, Pam? Was that, am I yeah. right? Wasn't, yeah. Weren't you the quarterfinal match you I, had to complete on yeah. Sunday? Yeah. I was the first victim of the day. <laughs> Quite a run for Sabatini. Played two and a half matches in one day. Only lost the last one. She was only 14, 14 or 15 years old. She was just a kid. She was finally stopped by Chris Everett. In fact, that year, wasn't she the youngest player to win a match at the U.S. Open? And uh, that was the year that John McEnroe won the U.S. Open. In fact, that's the last championship that he won in 84. Steffi Graf has turned this match around. It's four games to one for Graf. She's won four games in a row. This because I know we all are looking forward to covering it for you. The French Championships, over 50 hours of coverage, and it's all live, and it begins Monday.